Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton, and today I want to talk to you about pendulums, again under the topic of simple harmonic motion. Our objectives for today are going to be to analyze the motion of a physical pendulum and a simple pendulum to determine the period of small oscillations, and secondly, to state the approximation which must be made in deriving the period. So with that, let's dive right in. Here we have a simple pendulum. We have a mass m displaced some small angle theta from its equilibrium or rest position, and the length of the string that it's on is l. And we'll assume that the string, string is light. It has no mass whatsoever. So an ideal pendulum or simple pendulum. If I want to analyze this, I think the first thing I'm going to do is look at the forces and torques that I have involved here. So from my mass m, I must have some force of gravity, or the weight, mg, always pulling straight down here on the surface of the Earth. And I also have a position vector I'm going to have to define from my origin or reference point, p, down here to my mass m. And we'll call that r with respect to p. All right, now if I want to take a look at this, I think the place I'm going to start is by taking a look and realizing that the net torque around point p is going to be equal to rp cross f. Torque is r cross f. Well, in this case, f is just going to be mg, so that's rp crossed with mg. Or if I want the magnitude of that, the magnitude of our torque with respect to p is going to be mg l times the sine of our angle theta. Now, if we take this a little bit further, torque is equal to I alpha. So we could write this as MGL sine theta equals the moment of inertia of our system about point P times alpha. But notice that alpha is going to be, our angular acceleration is going to be in the opposite direction of theta. It's a restoring force. So one of these sides has to be negative. All right, now we're gonna have to make what's known as the small angle approximation. For small angles of theta, you can say the small angle approximation says that sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So we could rewrite this as minus mg l theta equals our moment of inertia about point P times our angular acceleration. But remember that angular acceleration, alpha, is the second derivative of theta with respect to time. So I can rewrite this again, minus mg l theta must be equal to my moment of inertia about point P times the second derivative of theta with respect to t. There's a second order differential equation. And if I rearrange it just a little bit, I can put it in standard form, d squared theta over dt squared plus mg l over my moment of inertia about point p times theta must equal zero. All right, so second, uh, second order differential equation of the variable theta, and it's in standard form. So we already know, we've solved several times now, this problem. We know that theta is going to be equal to some magnitude a times the cosine of omega t, where omega, where this right there is omega squared. So in this case, Omega squared is just going to be MGL over our moment of inertia, or omega itself is going to be the square root of that. MGL over moment of inertia about point P square root. So all I really need to do is figure out the moment of inertia of point P, which if we just have a mass at some distance L, well the moment of inertia should be pretty easy to see our moment of inertia about point P is just going to be ML squared. So if I want to find the period of oscillation of my system, well, period is 2 pi 
over omega, and we know omega is going to be MGL over IP, where IP is going to be ML squared. So that's going to be 2 pi times the square root of IP over MGL. Replace IP with ML squared, so that's 2 pi square root of ML squared over MGL. I have a couple cancellations I can make here. My squared goes away compared to the L. My mass makes a ratio of 1. And I come up with my final formula for the period of a simple pendulum. T equals 2 pi square root of, I'm left with an L, over G in the radical. And hopefully that looks fairly familiar. Probably have memorized that equation before as the period of a simple pendulum. But what happens if it's not a simple pendulum? What happens if it's a real pendulum or a physical pendulum? That's going to get a little bit more complex. Let's take a look and see what we would do in that situation. All right, here we have a rod. The center of mass is here, and we're going to rotate it about some hole we punch in at P way up here. The center of mass to that point P is distance D away. Well, we're going to start our analysis in almost the same way. We know we have from the center of mass a force of gravity down mg. And we'll also define our position vector to the center of mass again, rp. And of course, this is going to make some angle theta with that line of action. All right, there's our setup. Now we're going to derive almost the same way. We're going to say that our net torque, again, is going to be equal to r cross f, and we go through almost the exact same derivation we did before. The only difference now, we still have theta going to be equal to a cos omega t, and we will have omega squared equal to mg, we have a d instead of l, we just defined it a little differently, over the moment of inertia about point p. Omega, then, must be mg d over ip square root. Same thing we did previously. However, our moment of inertia is going to be a little bit different now. Our moment of inertia for a rod, if you recall, around its center of mass is 1 12th ml squared. But we're going to have to use the parallel axis theorem in order to find the moment of inertia around a point that's not the center of mass. So let's take a look at how we would do that. The moment of inertia of point around point P is going to be the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus md squared. So that's going to be, we have ml squared over 12 plus md squared. So now when we go to find our period, t equals 2 pi over omega, well, now omega is slightly different. So that's going to be 2 pi times the square root of ml squared over 12 plus md squared all over, still have this mgd. And I can factor the mass right out of there to say that that's going to be 2 pi times the square root of L squared over 12 plus D squared over GD. Or if you don't really like that 12 in there, we could multiply the top side by 12 and the bottom side by 12 and say that that's also equal to 2 pi square root of L squared plus 12 D squared over 12 GD. So the period of a physical pendulum, almost the same derivation, the only real change we have is that our moment of inertia is going to change because we're not rotating it about the center of mass anymore. All right, hopefully that gets you started with pendulums and simple harmonic motion. If you need more help looking for assistance, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks and make it a great day.